Web3, some are calling it the next phase of the internet. But what exactly is it? Essentially, Web3 is an internet that proponents say is owned by users. So what does that mean? Right now, the internet is dominated by a handful of companies like Meta, Amazon, and Google. Chances are a lot of the online platforms you use are dominated by one of these giants. Web3 would cut out the middleman and spread ownership among users with blockchain technology. Now, blockchain is a system where cryptocurrency transactions are stored across thousands of computers as opposed to a centralized network. So Web3, in theory, basically takes the internet out of the hands of the few companies that control it and spreads that power to users. Proponents of Web3 would say that people are not sufficiently rewarded for their participation in Web2 platforms. So Google may pay you X per million views on YouTube, but you're probably entitled to way more of that. But the whole point of crypto in general is to remove the middleman. For Web3, the whole point of those technologies is to remove the, the platform middlemen, um, the Googles, the Facebooks, the Amazons. Web3 would let you make payments online without going through a financial institution like a bank. Instead, platforms would have cryptocurrencies and NFTs built into them. An NFT or non-fungible token is like a blockchain receipt that certifies ownership of online assets like art, music, GIFs, or even tweets. The data is decentralized, so there's no, not a single entity that controls all your data. Your data is across the network and is secured uh, so that it's it's stored uh, properly and not a, not a single player is uh, running the, the whole nodes and the whole show. Here's an example of how a hypothetical Web3 version of Facebook would work. Instead of having an initial public offering, this version of Facebook would create a cryptocurrency token and airdrop it to early adopters. Users would be rewarded for going viral and could earn tokens based on engagement. Tokens could also be used to vote on decisions about policies like content moderation. The value of those tokens would depend on the platform's success. That means each person with a token would be incentivized to make Facebook as enjoyable as possible. But according to some critics, tokenizing participation on platforms like Facebook and Twitter would create harmful incentives for people to engage at any cost. The issue then becomes like, what kind of content does that incentivize? I mean, YouTube is, you get paid per click, uh, and that has, is not known for the most uh, healthy content sometimes. So uh, things like that. There are also other things like if everything is stored on the blockchain, which means it can't be, once it's in the blockchain, encrypted in there, it can't be removed. What does that do for, you know, illicit content that we would all agree should be taken down? But can it really be taken down? There are technical limitations to this that people don't really know. Notably, Web3 would support concepts like the metaverse, which are online spaces where people can socialize, work, and play as avatars. The metaverse has also been getting a lot of attention lately, especially with Facebook renaming itself to Meta in 2021 to underscore its focus on this new sector. So if that's Web3, what are Web1 and Web2? Web1 is the first version of the internet from the 90s and early 2000s. It was characterized by static web pages where people couldn't really do more than download information. In this phase, the internet was essentially trying to replicate existing media, like magazines, newspapers, and newsletters. Web2 began around 2004, and it let people download and upload information. Uploading here can refer to posts and photos on Facebook or videos on YouTube. Think of Web2 as the social media era, where the internet went from a computerized version of existing media to becoming its own unique entity. Another important part about Web1 is that it's, it ran on open source protocols. So HTML, HTTP, etc. they're all open source protocols. Whereas um, Web2, Facebook, Google, etc., they create platforms um, which are obviously owned by those companies rather than open source software to be used by everyone. So the idea of Web3 is that it takes the amazing content of Web2 and makes it open source again, um, takes it away from the platforms and, uh, and gives it to the people. The big question is whether Web3 can technically even be achieved. The concern among some critics is that the Web3 that's being hyped up would actually need to be centralized if it's going to be achieved but that goes against its entire core principle. 
The problem is that right now, Ethereum, the blockchain on which most of this is based, is known to be pretty inefficient. Transactions are expensive and require lots of energy. Some say having extensive blockchain activity is technically unattainable because the only way to scale those networks is by having them become centralized. Blockchain networks are also much more expensive to maintain than centralized ones. Also, even though the goal of Web3 is to transfer power from big companies to users, big venture capital firms, including Andreessen Horowitz, have already made huge investments in Web3 technology. In 2021, VCs invested around $18 billion in this space. Some critics think of Web3 as more of a power shift rather than decentralization. I've been skeptical of this concept of decentralization. My gut instinct has been that what we're doing is not really dispersing power, but we're in the process of there being kind of a power shift, right? From one party who had power in, you know, non-Web3 or non-blockchain systems, and now the power is going to blockchain systems, and there are people <laughs> within, within those systems or around those systems who are gaining concentrations of power. But if Web3 is attainable, when could we see it materialize? Well, it's actually already happening, at least to some degree. At the moment, it's already a reality, just in the sense that crypto is Web3, like a foundational Web3, and NFTs are also Web3. Um, so the foundational building blocks of Web3 are already worth like hundreds of billions of dollars. So you could say like we already are in the beta stage of Web3. The next phase of Web3 would include metaverse games that incorporate crypto and NFT enabled economies. Those games are already being developed and it's estimated they could come out in the next two to three years. Definitions and ideas around the feasibility of Web3 vary. But if one thing's for sure, it's that digital platforms and the ways we use them will continue to evolve. For sure, uh, disruption is there. Uh, where that will go and to what uh, extent it will go, uh, it's hard to predict. But uh, I am sure that the next uh, 10 years are going to be very exciting.